The immigrants have been constantly promised by Biden-Harris administration that the U.S. Department of State is actively working to resolve the immigrant visa backlog but the backlog for U.S. green card applicants has kept staying at alarming levels. Regardless of so many attempts the immigration issue has kept growing and everyone believes that Dignity Act is the one which can provide the answers to every immigrant. In this video, we're going to talk about the Immigration Reform Ways and Dignity Act and its status in the video. This is as a sudden feature and video questions to see how best we can help you out your process. Please don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. So, without any further delay, now let's get into the video. There have been significant changes since the United States last underwent comprehensive immigration reform more than 37 years ago. Immigration and border regulations in the United States have become more complicated, posing problems for both citizens and non-citizens. Democratic and Republican officials talked about practical immigration reform strategies with Evan H. Jenkins, Senior Vice President of Government Affairs of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, at the Common Grounds event. They discussed their efforts to fix this flawed system together. The Dignity Act's impact on U.S. immigration policy, a bipartisan bill to handle the new realities of immigration, was drafted by Mara Elvira Salazar, a Republican who represents Florida's 27th Congressional District, and Veronica Escobar, a Democrat who represents Texas's 16th Congressional District. A rational and equitable modernization and security of the country's immigration and border processes is the goal of the Dignity Act of 2023 legislation. According to the Dignity Act, you could live a dignified life in the promised land if you don't have papers or are undocumented, Salazar added. While you are here, you will be living a good life, contributing to the economy of this nation, being a nice person, and not committing a crime. That does not mean that you have to follow the route of citizenship, though. The lack of progress on immigration reform in Congress served as the impetus for the bipartisan legislation, which comes at a crucial time for change in the United States. The best way to handle a border is to acknowledge that migration occurs before people reach the border and to present reasonable answers in that way, according to Escobar. The Dignity Act demands modernization of the border There is a lack of order at the U.S. border due to outdated equipment, like filtering technology that monitors all incoming traffic. Representative Maria Elvira Salazar, R. Florida, introduced the Dignity Act, H.R. 3599, in the U.S. House of Representatives, a bipartisan effort to strengthen border security in the United States, provide undocumented individuals with an opportunity to obtain legal status if they meet certain requirements, and update aspects of the U.S. legal immigration system. Additional co-sponsors include Reps. Veronica Escobar, D. Texas, Lori Chavez Derrimer, R. Oregon, Mike Lawler, R. New York, and Jennifer Gonzalez Colon, R. Puerto Rico. This bipartisan effort comes as new polling indicates that more than four in five Americans, including 80% of Republican registered voters, support Republicans and Democrats working together on immigration reforms that address labor shortages and inflation, protect people already in the U.S., and contribute to their communities. During the rollout of the legislation, Rep. Salazar indicated that the bill is intended to follow the biblical principles of dignity and redemption. The bill also aims to focus on modernizing America's immigration system to meet the country's economic needs and to do so in a manner that supports American workers. The bill is divided into the following five sections. A. Border Security for America Act. B. American Dream and Promise. C. Improving Season Guest Worker Opportunities. D. American Agricultural Dominance Act. And E. American Prosperity and Competitiveness. This analysis details the main provisions within the bill's five separate sections. While it is not a comprehensive summary of the 483-page bill, it does underscore key takeaways from the legislation. Division A. Border Security for America Act. The bill contains provisions aimed at enhancing border security and reforming the U.S. asylum system. These measures are designed to improve infrastructure, personnel, and asylum processing while addressing border-related challenges. The bill encompasses a comprehensive set of measures aimed at bolstering border security and implementing significant reforms in the asylum process. In terms of border security, the legislation allocates substantial funding, amounting to $25 billion, distributed over several years until 2031. This funding is intended to establish a comprehensive border infrastructure system, which includes the construction of physical barriers like walls and levees, as well as the integration of detection technology, improved roads, enhanced lighting, and other technological advancements to effectively secure the border. 
The bill also allocates $10 billion over the fiscal years 2024 to 2028 for the enhancement of ports of entry. This funding could be utilized for constructing new ports or upgrading existing ones, with an emphasis on expanding inspection lanes for vehicles, cargo, and pedestrians at these ports within a five-year timeframe. Personnel levels for Customs and Border Protection CBP, encompassing Border Patrol agents and Port of Entry officers, are explicitly mandated by the bill. It introduces provisions for recruitment and retention bonuses, special compensation for personnel in remote areas, and an increase in the minimum pay for Border Patrol agents. Furthermore, the legislation directs the Department of Homeland Security DHS, to implement a biometric exit data system at all air, land, and sea ports within five years, with an allocated budget of $100 million. The grant program known as Operation Stone Garden, dedicated to enhancing border security and supporting entities near the border such as states, counties, and tribes, receives increased funding, totaling $110 million for fiscal years 2024 to 2028, compared to $90 million in the previous fiscal year. To fund these measures, the bill establishes an Immigration Infrastructure Fund, which will finance the associated costs of infrastructure, personnel, and related initiatives. This fund will be funded by levying a 1.5% fee on the income of individuals granted work authorization under the Dignity Program. The legislation also introduces significant reforms to the asylum process. It establishes five humanitarian campuses HCs, managed by CBP along the southern border where migrants will be detained while asylum officers conduct interviews and make final determinations. These facilities will provide access to medical staff, social workers, mental health professionals, child advocates, and legal counsel. Migrants will undergo an initial screening within 15 days of arrival, following a 72-hour rest period, with this screening including background checks, biometric data analysis, verification of identification, medical assessments, human trafficking screenings, and an initial credible fear interview. Those unable to establish credible fear will face expedited removal. Within 45 days of passing the initial credible fear interview, trained USCIS asylum officers will review asylum claims and make final determinations, either approving, denying, or referring complex cases to immigration judges. Asylum seekers referred to immigration judges will participate in a case management program, be subject to GPS tracking, and engage in weekly check-ins. The bill also proposes in-country processing in Latin America to pre-screen asylum claims, explore family reunification options for unmarried children under 21 with legally present parents, and consider work visa or citizenship pathways. Additionally, it introduces a new humanitarian visa, capped annually at the same level as the refugee ceiling. For unaccompanied minors, the bill mandates criminal history background checks for potential sponsors and imposes penalties for fraudulent transfer of custody. Finally, it implements a two-strike policy, directing individuals attempting to cross between ports of entry to apply for asylum at designated ports. A second attempt to cross between ports would result in expedited removal proceedings. The bill also includes provisions related to visa security, transnational criminal organizations, employment verification, and economic development in Central America. The proposed bill encompasses a range of measures aimed at enhancing the security and integrity of the U.S. visa system, addressing transnational criminal organizations, implementing mandatory e-verify procedures, and promoting development in Central America. Firstly, the bill seeks to expand the Visa Security Program VSP, managed by Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE, to include the 75 most high-risk posts worldwide. It mandates the use of electronic passport scanning and some facial recognition technology at airports. Additionally, the bill calls for a report on visa overstays and directs the Department of Homeland Security DHS, to ensure that the Student and Exchange Visitor Information System CEVIS, is accessible to Customs and Border Protection CBP, officers at all ports of entry. The legislation also permits DNA verification of family relationships on a case-by-case -case basis to combat human trafficking. Furthermore, the bill addresses transnational criminal organizations, particularly those involved in drug trafficking and criminal gangs. It mandates the DHS secretary to designate certain cartels as special transnational criminal organizations and increases penalties for smuggling non-citizens into the U.S., especially if a firearm is involved. 
The legislation also raises penalties for individuals charged with illegal re-entry into the U.S. Additionally, it incorporates Sarah's Law, which mandates detention for certain non-citizens charged with crimes resulting in someone's death or serious bodily injury. The bill introduces a mandatory e-verify system for employers, requiring them to verify the employment eligibility of potential employees through the Employment Eligibility Verification System EEVS, administered by DHS. Employers must attest, under penalty of perjury, that they have verified that a potential employee is not an undocumented immigrant. The timeline for compliance varies depending on the number of employees, with agricultural employers granted a longer compliance period. Lastly, the legislation emphasizes the importance of addressing the root causes of irregular migration from Central American countries like Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. It directs the Secretary of State to develop a four-year strategy focusing on strengthening the rule of law, combating poverty, addressing gang violence, and similar issues. The bill also seeks to expand the investigation and prosecution of human smuggling and trafficking networks and increase the criminal penalties for smugglers, potentially up to 20 years in prison. These measures collectively aim to promote security, integrity, and stability within the immigration system and address the complex challenges associated with migration from Central America. Division B, American Dream and Promise. The bill provides DREAMers, including DACA recipients, and certain temporary protected status, TPS, holders with an opportunity to adjust to lawful status. It also establishes the Dignity Program, which provides undocumented immigrants with an opportunity to obtain legal status if they meet certain requirements. The bill incorporates a version of the DREAM Act, which aims to provide a pathway to legal status for young undocumented immigrants who were brought to the United States as children and have spent most of their lives in the country. This section of the legislation has the potential to benefit approximately 1.9 million individuals known as DREAMers, including the roughly 600,000 recipients of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, program, enabling them to reside and work legally in the U.S. Under this provision, DREAMers and DACA recipients would be eligible for a conditional permanent resident status, which would be valid for up to 10 years. This status would offer protection from deportation, allow them to work legally in the U.S., and permit them to travel outside the country. To qualify as a conditional permanent resident, individuals must meet certain criteria, including having continuously resided in the U.S. for three years having entered the country at an age younger than 18 years old, and either having graduated from high school or being currently enrolled in secondary school. Dreamers and DACA recipients can transition from their conditional status to become lawful permanent residents, LPRs, if they accomplish one of the following milestones. Obtaining a college or graduate degree, serving at least three years in the U.S. military, or being employed and working for at least four years. As part of the application process, applicants may be required to pay a fee of up to $495. Additionally, the bill extends access to in-state tuition rates in higher education to DREAMers and DACA recipients, enhancing their opportunities for pursuing further education in the United States. For TPS holders, this section of the legislation incorporates a version of the American Promise Act, aimed at providing a pathway for certain temporary protected status, TPS, and deferred enforced departure, DEAD holders to attain lawful permanent resident, LPR, status in the United States. This provision has the potential to benefit approximately 335,000 TPS holders by allowing them to continue residing and working in the country. To be eligible for LPR status under this provision, TPS holders must meet specific criteria, including having been continuously present in the U.S. for a period of three years and having qualified for TPS status as of March 8, 2021. Additionally, applicants are subject to various requirements, including a background check. While this provision is expected to benefit most TPS recipients from countries like El Salvador, Honduras, and Nicaragua, it should be noted that the cutoff date for eligibility does not encompass individuals from Venezuela, Afghanistan, Haiti, and Ukraine. As part of the application process, applicants may also be required to pay a fee of up to $1,140. Detailed Dignity Program the Dignity Program is a proposed initiative aimed at granting legal status to undocumented immigrants residing in the United States. To qualify for this program, individuals must undergo a thorough criminal background check, settle any outstanding tax liabilities, and fulfill various other prerequisites. 
A crucial requirement includes making restitution payments to be considered eligible. Under the Dignity Program, a seven-year deferred action program would be established, granting employment and travel authorization to undocumented residents who have continuously lived in the U.S. for a minimum of five years before the bill's enactment. Participants in the program would be required to pay a fine and contribute to the American Worker Fund. Additionally, participants must adhere to several obligations during their participation in the program. This includes paying taxes, enrolling in health coverage, and being prohibited from accessing federal means-tested benefits or entitlement programs. To maintain their status, participants must also be gainfully employed or engaged in education for a minimum of four years, with limited exceptions. The program directs all non-citizens in the U.S. without lawful status to either apply for the Dignity Program or explore alternative options. Moreover, participants in the program are obligated to pay a total of $5,000 over the seven-year duration, undergo regular check-ins with the Department of Homeland Security, DHS, every two years, and maintain good public standing. Successful completion of the Dignity Program provides two avenues for continued legal presence. The first option is Dignity Status, which offers a five-year lawful status with employment authorization, along with the ability to re-enter the U.S., renewable every five years. The second option is the Redemption Program, offering a five-year conditional redemption status with employment and travel authorization. To qualify for the Redemption Program, individuals must first complete the seven-year Dignity Program. After successfully finishing the Redemption Program, there may be an opportunity to apply for Lawful Permanent Resident, LPR, status. Division C. Improving Season Guest Worker Opportunities. In essence, a returning worker refers to a seasonal guest worker who had entered the U.S. on an H-2B visa during this specified time frame. In terms of H-2B visa program administration, the legislation provides measures to empower the Department of Labor, DAL, to oversee and enforce compliance with the H-2B program. This includes the establishment of a complaint mechanism and the authority to impose sanctions, such as temporary or permanent exclusion for repeat violations. Furthermore, the bill places a requirement on H-2B companies to develop and maintain worksite safety and compliance strategies, with the added stipulation that employers and recruiters are prohibited from charging fees for H-2B recruitment. Division D. American Agricultural Dominance Act. T. He proposed bill introduces a new, uncapped temporary worker visa program known as Certified Agricultural Worker, CA, status, specifically designed for undocumented farm workers. Under this program, renewed CA visas would be valid for five and a half years. Eligibility for the Certified Agricultural Worker, CA, status is extended to unauthorized immigrants who have worked in agriculture for a minimum of 180 days within the past two years. Furthermore, Unauthorized farm workers who have accrued at least 100 days of work in the agricultural sector within the last three years may also become eligible to receive additional H-2A visas. In terms of status adjustment, the legislation outlines a path for unauthorized farm workers to seek legal permanent resident (LPR) status. This can be pursued after either eight years of holding CA status or a combination of four years of CA status along with 10 years of experience in agricultural labor. Additionally, the bill streamlines the application process for firms seeking H-2A visas by consolidating it onto a single platform, making it more efficient and accessible. Division E. American Prosperity and Competitiveness. The proposed measure aims to enhance the U.S. legal immigration system with several key objectives, including preserving family unity, reducing visa backlogs, and stimulating employment opportunities. To promote family unity, the bill proposes exemptions for spouses and young children of legal permanent residents, LPRs, from family preference green card caps. Notably, the F-2A category, which traditionally allocates 89,700 yearly visas to the wives and minor children of LPRs, would be shifted to the F-1 family preference category. This change would significantly increase the number of available visas for this group, raising it from 23,400 to 111,300 per year. Addressing visa backlogs, the legislation sets a limit of 10 years for lawful visa backlog cases. Individuals who have been in the family or employment backlog for over 10 years would receive their visas. To mitigate country-specific backlogs, the bill proposes an increase in the green card per country cap from 7% to 15% for employment-based or family-sponsored preference visas annually.
This change, combined with other reforms, seeks to eliminate country-specific backlogs. The measure includes provisions to protect documented dreamers by preventing them from aging out of their status at 21 due to visa delays. It also allows international students with F-1 visas to have dual intent, eliminating the requirement to demonstrate their intent to return home after graduation. In terms of employment visas, the legislation excludes derivatives, children and spouses, from annual visa totals, meaning only the principal applicant counts toward visa numbers. This change could potentially expand the number of high-skilled workers by 50% without increasing visa caps. The bill grants work authorization to spouses of H-1B visa holders upon receiving their H-4 visa, providing them with employment opportunities. Additionally, it presumes eligibility for O visas, typically reserved for individuals with exceptional talent, for STEM or medical doctoral graduates. Furthermore, the measure establishes an immigration agency coordinator tasked with managing USCIS, the Department of State, and the Department of Labor. It also allocates $3.5 billion to improve processing and eliminate visa and work authorization backlogs, aiming to streamline the immigration system and enhance efficiency. I hope you guys found this video extremely helpful. If you know anybody that could benefit from this information, definitely make sure to share this video with them. We are all about empowering you with knowledge. So the more people that can benefit from this video, the more people will want watching this video. If you like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs icon. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and hit on the notification bell for more immigration updates. Bye!